At the end of June 2013, the Supreme Court decided Shelby County versus Holder, a very much anticipated case involving the constitutionality of part of the Voting Rights Act. The Voting Rights Act was originally enacted in 1965 as a way of enforcing the 15th Amendment's guarantee that people should be able to vote regardless of the color of their skin. Uh, for about a hundred years after the enactment of the 15th Amendment, many, in many parts of the country, African Americans in particular, were prevented through all sorts of mechanisms from actually being able to cast ballots or being able to register to vote. In 1965, Congress passed the Voting Rights Act, and the part that was at issue uh, in, in the Shelby County case involved something called preclearance. Section 5 of the Voting Rights Act requires certain jurisdictions to get permission from the federal government or from a special court in Washington, D.C. before they can make changes in voting. The reason for this is that what Congress found is that many jurisdictions had a habit of reenacting new or enacting new voting restrictions or voting rules that had a, a discriminatory effect as soon as one was struck down uh, as being discriminatory. The preclearance mechanism then was designed to prevent that kind of evasion of the law uh, and was designed to make sure that when jurisdictions, covered jurisdictions, made changes in voting, it would not have a discriminatory effect on minority voters. When Section 5 was originally enacted in 1965, it was, uh, had a five-year time horizon. It's been reenacted several times, most recently in 2006 when it was enacted with, uh, 20, for another 25 years. Section 5 also has been repeatedly challenged in the courts, and the Supreme Court had, until this year, upheld it. This year, in a 5-4 to four decision, the Roberts Court held that not Section 5 itself, but the formula for which jurisdictions are covered by Section 5, which is in Section 4B, was unconstitutional unconstitutional because it violated a principle of equal sovereignty by treating states dif differently from each other without an adequate record. What this means is that Congress has a, the ability, at least theoretically, to go back and reenact a different version of Section 4B, dis determining which jurisdictions it thinks should be covered by Section 5, but that may be extremely difficult politically to, to accomplish. In addition, some jurisdictions are covered by Section 5 by virtue of a court finding that their past discriminatory actions uh, are warranted. There are, in fact, some jurisdictions, such as the state of Arkansas, that are still covered by Section 5 even after the holding of this case. And uh, advocates for minority voting rights have already gone into court and asked for the state of Texas to be covered uh, under that provision of the Voting Rights Act so that the state of Texas would have to continue to obtain preclearance for its voting changes. At the same time, several jurisdictions, including Texas and North Carolina, that had attempted to put in place voter ID laws but were stopped by the preclearance requirement, announced more or less immediately after the, voting, after the Shelby County case was decided that they were going to go ahead uh, and impose those rules now that they were out, uh, now that their preclearance requirement was declared unconstitutional. 